What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 10 of our data analysis with Python and Pandas tutorial series. In this part, what we're going to be talking about is handling missing data. You're going to see this usually as NAN or NAN, which means not a number. Uh, but generally, all missing data will be called not a number regardless of whether or not it's anything at all. And you basically you have a lot of choices when it comes to handling for missing data. And each choice is valid in its own right in various uh, circumstances, but a lot of times the choice that you make to handle missing data could be the wrong one. So there's a little bit of philosophy that goes into which option you may end up choosing. So when you have missing data, you basically have four major choices. Okay, you could ignore the data. You could just ignore the fact that there's missing data, right? You you totally right to do that. Uh, then you could delete it. Okay, so you could delete uh, and really deleting it as there's two two options here but for now we'll just say delete it uh, so remove the missing data okay uh, then you've got fill in the missing data so you could take you know previous the previous data point and just kind of copy that into the the missing one right now uh, you could take the future data point kind of push it backwards into the missing data point okay so that's filling uh, and then finally you can replace not a you know missing data with some sort of static number or something like that. So those are your four major choices, and we're going to be covering all four uh, in this tutorial, and as, and as well as kind of covering why you might choose that specific option and when you maybe shouldn't use any of the options or maybe not do anything and maybe ignore it. So the first option that we're going to cover is ignore it, right? Uh, that's really quick tutorial. Uh, you do nothing. So. Uh, the next option would be uh, to delete it. So that's what we're going to cover uh, second, I suppose. So what we're going to do, uh, instead of saying Texas one year equals this, we're going to actually add this to the data frame. So we're going to say uh, HPI underscore data, and we're going to redefine and call a new column. We're going to say TX one year like that. That's fine. Then um, we're not going to be... We don't really need to plot anything at the moment necessarily. Um, let me do this, and we're going to do this, and we're going to say we want to print HPI data, but we're going to print those the two uh, data sets there. So uh, square brackets, square brackets, and we got te Texas, and then Texas one year that we want to look at here. Okay, so then to plot, we're going to plot this exact same data set like this. And that should be good. Um, we can try to run that. I don't think that's going to work though because we're going to have a lot of not availables here. Yeah, I mean, uh, I wasn't expecting to see that. Um, interesting. We may not actually, let's see. So we did not, let's see, HPI data TX one year equals that resample print. Uh, TS one year TS resample. How? Oh, okay. That's our problem. Is this how open, high, low, close? Uh, mean. Let's try that one more time. There we go. Okay. So yeah. So we got the Texas monthly, but the TX one year is not displaying. The reason for that is basically it's filled with not in numbers, but there are some valuations here. So after you get more than uh, twelve of them, like let's do this. You do actually have values, right? Because there are. Uh, picked up once a year. Now, but we have all these missing numbers, right? Not a number, not a number, not a number, and then finally we got a number. Okay, so there's a lot of options here. Um, we'll kill it. Kill it! Um, so the first one that we were going to say was to delete it. So we have a couple options when we go to delete data. There are, um, first, you can just drop any existence of a not a number, okay? So our first choice would be just drop NA. So we can do something like this. We could say this has NAs. Um, then what we do is I can come over here and I can go, well, actually, we'll, we'll leave that first one and then we'll print another one. Uh, we'll just do the head, though. And then we'll do it again. So we'll print out two heads. And then what we'll say is HPI underscore data dot drop NA. And that's all. That'll drop the not avail not a numbers, and it will return a data frame. So again, remember what happens when we return data frames. We have to say in place equals true, or redefine the data frame. 
One of those two options, okay? So we're going to say drop NA. What this does is any row that contains any not of numbers gets removed from our data. So we save and run that. Sure enough, cool. We got the graph, but then we also see that not only did we get the graph, but we also, um, the, the regular Texas is all, also only sampled once every year, okay? Um, and you can see that happens down here. So this is the original where it was every month, basically, and these are just not a number because there's no number for that. And then here, there's no more numbers, but that's because it's being sampled every single, um, every year. So, uh, so let's close this out. Now, um, so that was drop NA, and that would that's a scenario where you drop e every row that basically has any sort of missing data. Now, the next option you have is you can say drop NA, but let's say you only want to drop rows that are have all, not a numbers. Okay, so, so what you would do here is you would say uh, how equals all in place true, okay? And um, so that's, that's when every not a number Right, so we don't even get a graph now because not every column here was not a number, only one column. So it's only when everything in that data set is not a number that it would be dropped. So there you go. Uh, there is one more parameter, it's called threshold. And the threshold, you can set the minimum. Um, so pandas, actually pandas drop NA. Let's look that up really quick move this over. So this is from the documentation and you can see these are all your options. You can just ignore that. How, any, all, default is any. Um, and then threshold here, this is uh, the basically require that many non not available values. So if there are that many non not available values, it won't be removed. Okay, and then in place equals true. So moving this over here, um, so that would be how you can remove by just drop all not in numbers and you can kind of have, you have a lot of choices. You can drop if there's any, if it's all not a number, or if it passes a certain threshold of not in numbers, uh, we drop those. Now, another uh, option here is to fill not a number. So instead of drop NA, let me just highlight this, we'll come down here, paste. Um, Instead of drop NA, and we'll leave in place equals true for now, uh, our option could be fill NA. And then with fill NA, you have a method, and your method is one of two things. You might, well, sorry, there's more, but they basically boil down to the same one. Uh, you've got forward fill or backward fill. So you could do F fill, that means forward fill. You can think of this kind of like a broom, because it kind of goes. Um, I don't know, it's a little counterintuitive to me, at least initially when I first learned it, but forward fill, that means you're going to take data and fill it forward, okay? Uh, so that means it's actually going to take data from before, right? So to me, when I hear, I would hear backfill and I would think, oh, okay, it fills from the previous data, maybe, I don't know. But anyway, think of it like a sweep, you know, or like a broom. You're kind of sweeping the data forward. So this will take previous values and fill them in forward. So we can run that real quick. And sure enough, we get a graph, and there you go. This is it. And you get all these little steps because it's like it's taking all the, this data, filling forward, boom, new data, awesome, fill forward, boom, new data, fill forward. Okay. Now you have also you've got fill backwards. So that was forward fill, but then you could do back fill, and that would be taking data from really after and filling it backwards. So this one would be a little more biased, right? And sure enough, it it kind of precedes this line in every aspect because it's taking data from before or it's taking data from the future and filling it backwards and that's also why it fits this line apparently much better. So we'll close this out. Okay, so that's fill in A and then before that drop in A, okay. But we also have another version of fill in A and that is um, we can fill it with a value. So we can say what we want this value to be. Now, in this scenario, it makes no sense, but the reason why you might fill NA is you could fill it with really anything you want. You could fill it with literally the characters null. Uh, you could also, uh, like with machine learning, for example, a lot of times people will take um, 
not a missing data and fill it with like negative 99,999, something like that. And the machine learning classifier will automatically see that as a significant outlier and kind of treat it like junk, basically, and kind of ignore it. Uh, so you might see something like that where uh, instead of method B fill, you can fill in A with the value uh, of, and then we'll just do negative 99999. And then in place equals true, that's fine. Let's do save and run that. And then so you get a graph like this. Um, obviously that's not, it doesn't really work out for us because we're doing negative 9999. And so it's an ugly graph. But uh, in the data, you can see here where they were not in numbers, it's now filled with negative 900 or negative 99,999. Now, um, an interesting one here is, let me move this over. Uh, with fill in A, you have this choice of limit. Uh, so this can help you kind of um, keep a little bit of data integrity here. So if you have, let's say, you know, a data set that has 100,000 rows, but 50,000 of those rows is going to be negative 99,999, uh, that might not be... Uh, good enough for you. That might be a little too many uh, that you filled in. So what you can do is you can take this limit and apply that limit and say I will only do this to say you know a uh, hundred rows or you know you can make it dynamic and, and check the length of the data frame and say okay if the if and set the limit to be 50 percent of your data frame or 10 percent of the length of your data frame and what happens um, is you can if you apply this limit, after you apply that limit, um, let's see, pandas contains NA. I think it's um, is NA is what you can ask for. Uh, and you can find out if the data frame has any not numbers within it. So, uh, and if you do, what you would do is you would run through uh, your data frame, you would apply, maybe you replace, you would set your limit, and then you after that, after you run that fill in A, check to see if there's any not a numbers in existence in your data frame. Uh, and then uh, if there are, either you know stop doing calculations or uh, whatever. Now what I'm trying to find is check to see if in pandas data frame. I'm just trying to look that up because I'm pretty like I've done that before. Let's click uh, check this. Yeah, so what you can do is um, to check to see just for the record, Google is your friend. Uh, what you can say here is you could say print uh, df dot is null dot values dot sum and let's say value fill that and then we can say limit equals ten. Okay, and let's run that real quick. Wait for root. Oh, DF, <laughs> my bad, let's do that. DF doesn't exist for us. Okay, so we come over here, and sure enough, we can see that we've got 414 remaining not in numbers here. So that's our way of checking. So like after we, we do this fill in A, and we say, hey, we only want, you know, 10% of our data frame to contain not in numbers, you could run this, and if that this greater than zero, uh, you know, break or something like that. Stop doing stuff. Uh, send me an email and tell me something's wrong. Um, anyway, I think that's good enough for handling of missing data. In the next tutorial, uh, I think what we'll do is we'll be talking about rolling statistics and stuff like that. So you can do some pretty cool stuff there. Uh, and then after that, we'll talk about handling erroneous data. So anyways, that's what we're going to be uh, doing in the next tutorial, so stay tuned for that. Questions, comments, suggestions, whatever, leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. Until next time.